If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Hi, welcome back. In last video, we have seen how to control your test data on the fly using the uh, Blaze Meters uh, Redis data set plugin. But similar stuff we can achieve using the HTTP uh, simple table server. As you know, uh, we can inject more load uh, using the master and worker architecture where you'll be using multiple hosts uh, to inject the load to the uh, application under test. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, the files, uh, the CSE files, are uh, they don't transfer from the uh, master machine to the uh, worker machine. So that is where the HTTP simple table server comes into picture where uh, it will uh, send, it will communicate using the uh, RMI protocol. So now, uh, how we can leverage this particular uh, plugin uh, for our updating the uh, test data and uh, we can see it in the execution in the runtime. So similar to Redis dataset, we are going to follow the same approach, but uh, let us see how uh, this particular architecture works. Uh, and we can see with an example and we can run a quick test. We see whether the updated data is coming into our uh, runtime test or not. So whenever uh, you start working on simple table server, uh, there are a couple of things you have to take care. So one is uh, using the uh, running the uh, table server. So how you want to run. So there are couple ways to run your uh, table server. One is using the command prompt uh, or you can use the JMeter and manually click on the start button. So what I'm going to do is I am uh, going to create a, a thread group. So I'm going to create a setup thread group. So the reason I'm setting up the uh, thread group is I want to run only once. So that particular request, it is uh, called init. So before you begin on, uh, working on any CSV file, you have to load that into memory. So that is where this init part comes into picture. So whenever you uh, load this into uh, memory, so that file will be, uh, uh, you will be able to uh, manipulate. Okay, so that is why we have to execute only once. So we don't need to execute uh, more than once or uh, as per the load. So we have to just load it only once. So that is the reason I am creating the setup thread group. And here I am going to add a HTTP request, say a 00 uh, underscore uh, init. And uh, if you want to manually trigger the HTTP uh, simple table server, you can do that using the non-test elements. So go to uh, right click on the test plan, add non-test elements and HTTP uh, simple table server. So here you can see by default, it listens to the port 9191 and I'm going to set the directory a bin. That is where I'm going to create a, a CSV file for my test. So if you want to, uh, run your uh, start your table server manually you can click on start and this will uh, sp spin up the local uh, 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 url uh, on the port 9191 so if you go to uh, new tab and press local host 9191 if you hit enter you can see unknown command because we have to pass certain uh, parameters say we can use sts simple table server slash uh, status so now it says error uh, database was empty because we have not loaded any uh, csv file so if you go to sts uh, you you can see uh, certain uh, http requests so this is where we are going to work so let us uh, just keep it here on the right side so that we can refer it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this because I don't want to start manually. So I'm going to, if I use uh, Jenkins or Team City, right? I want to uh, start automatically uh, whenever uh, I'm about to run my JMeter test. So that is where your command uh, prompt for the uh, simple table server will be very handy. So if you go to bin folder, you can uh, see the simple uh, table uh, server dot CMD. So just double click. So this will spin up the uh, local and at 9191. So just minimize this. So now if you go to your uh, uh, 
STS, you can see it's still running. So the very beginning uh, request is you have to load a file into the memory. So that is where this init file uh, comes into picture. So before that, we have to create a CSV file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new uh, CSV called say colors dot CSV and I'm going to uh, enter few values inside the colors dot CSV say uh, red, blue, green and I'm going to save this and I'm going to close and here I'm going to delete this I don't want this and in the init I'm going to enter a local host and the port is 9191 and I'm going to uh, use the uh, init so right click copy and paste it here and in the file name we are going to use colors.csv and I'm going to add a listener view results tree and also I'm going to add a debug sampler so now let us uh, run yes I'm going to save this so sts demo and I'm going to run this now if you see uh, the it is sending the request uh, get and the response is uh, three three means the number of values inside the colors.csv which is three rows okay so now we are we are good with the init part so next is we are going to uh, read some of the values from the csv file so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new thread group okay so this uh, say uh, read thread group read or write thread group okay and here I'm going to add a HTTP uh, request to read okay so I'm going to read a value from my loaded CSV file. So for that, again, we are going to leverage this. So what we are going to use is the get. So this one, get one line from list. So here there are a couple options. Uh, one is the read mode where you can read the first value or the last value or the random value. And we want to mention whether we have to keep that uh, the keep flag true or false on the file name which is colors.csv so I'm going to copy this and here I'm going to uh, enter localhost so this is a bad way of uh, using we can use HTTP request defaults but for the demonstration purpose I'm going to add this uh, for all the requests and the read is uh, random so you're going to read randomly and this is true and this is uh, colors.csv so this is the file which is loading from the memory okay now what we can do is we can run it and here uh, if you click on the 01 underscore read you can see the response as red and if I run it again it will be blue if I run it again it will be uh, different so randomly it takes some value from the loaded uh, CSV file and then it will display it here. So this is a HTML output. So we have to extract it so that we can use it in our actual test. So right now we are not doing any uh, testing. Okay. We are just uh, loaded the file and we are just reading it. Okay. Next we are going to write it. So just before that I want to work on the uh, regular expression extractor so that I can uh, extract the content. So for that, I'm going to use the uh, regular expression extractor and I can say extract the uh, extract color and the regular expression is uh, which should be very simple. Just copy this and paste it here and we can write some typical uh, regular expression and the group is one and the match number is one and the error in retrieving the data 
okay so this is the main sample only applies to main sample and the field to check is body so now what we can do is let us add a debug sampler here and let us clear this off and let us run again and here you can see the extract color is red so if i run it again it will be blue okay now our regular expression extractor is working fine so now what we can do is uh, let me add a simple uh, uh, controller so this is our actual uh, aut assume that this is actual aut so inside this i am going to add a sampler let's see uh, uh, dummy sampler okay so this is our actual uh, test say login okay and here we are going to send the data so what data we are going to send is whatever the color we are going to we are extracted here so just copy this and put it in the uh, request okay so just we are sending some uh, dummy data as a color whatever we extracted from the loaded memory file we are just sending it in the dummy sampler okay now let us uh, do some configuration here so this particular thread group this is the actual test so we are going to run it as infinite uh, loop before that what i can do i can add a constant timer say 500 milliseconds and yes we are good so now let us hit run so if you see the uh, this uh, login transaction and go to request you can see the value green similarly you can keep clicking uh, the new new stuffs see it is uh, everything is uh, random so red blue green so it keeps on uh, retrieving the random value and then it will send it in the uh, request data okay now my test is running successfully but now i want to update my uh, colors.csv with new sets of uh, colors so for that again we have to refer the sample uh, requests so i want to add a new line to my csv file so how do we add that is using this get or post so just for the simplicity sake let us go with the uh, get so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this whole command and in the uh, new window i'm going to okay let us go back here okay here copy this sorry paste it here and change the host name to uh, local host and the port is uh, 9191 and the file name we are going to work is uh, colors.csv and the line line means the data actual data we are going to add is say uh, purple and add mode is we are going to add this in the last row okay and uniqueness is uh, we can add this uh, parameter also uniqueness uh, is the uh, uniqueness is false okay that's that flag is false and hit enter so now you can see the response is okay so here you don't get it any response okay visually you don't get it but actual response is okay uh, and now if you go back to your test and if you click on the uh, login you can see the purple in the request data we can spot purple see so purple has come here so now let us add another color say uh, yellow hit enter and go back to your jmedia uh, test now you can see yellow so like this you can keep on adding whenever your, your test is running and uh, you can see the updated value in your actual test so this is how you inject the uh, values test data and that will be leveraged immediately in your actual run but if you go to your bin folder and if you go to your actual colors.csv if you open this whatever the data you have added that will not be present okay still your data will be red blue green whatever you have written the data that it will not get reflected here 
okay but if you want to save if you want to download that newly added stuff locally again there is a command so go to your uh, firefox sorry uh, the browser and here you can see uh, there is a instruction to save the specified linked list in a file to the default location so just copy this and come back here and paste it here and in the file name you have to enter the colors.csv okay now you can see the output is uh, five because we have five rows of data so this will be uh, saved in your bin folder so if you go to your bin folder you can see this uh, the date uh, the year uh, month date and the timestamp and dot colors dot csv now if you open this csv file you can see the updated value so if you want to download the uh, the data the whatever the change data to your local so you have to send a uh, request okay there are a couple more uh, stuffs so one is the status so if you want to get the status of your uh, http table server you can get the status and uh, if you want to uh, shut down your simple table server you can send the uh, this uh, http request if you want to uh, remove the all the elements from the specified list you can use this command so it's very pretty simple uh, it can be easily automated in any uh, pipeline uh, even you can create a script for in jmeter or you can uh, create some python script to send a http request or bash script so anything is possible uh, by leveraging the uh, http simple table server so please try and see how it goes so only thing i i have i'm thinking of the drawback the con is basically uh, there are a couple setups you have to do uh, in case if you take the redis data set there is no setup unless you have the redis cluster is not ready you have to work on that but apart from that uh, everything is already available you just you have to add the config element and you have to configure the uh, uh, the credentials uh, connection stuffs and like that but here you have to set up and you have to read then you have to pass it to your uh, actual eat but you have multiple thread groups you have to make sure uh, you have to leverage the intercommunication thread group so that you can pass the variable to the queue and the queue will read so things like that also it's possible uh, but uh, please uh, keep in mind there are a couple options available similar to virtual table server in load under so here we have a couple options so that's it guys from my side uh, please let me know if you have any questions you can post it in the qa insights uh, community uh, and please subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for listening have a good day thank you if you like my dad's videos please subscribe to qa insights channel